Today we're going to take a look at a very interesting article that suggests there's a correlation between wealth of a country and the prevalence of multiple sclerosis. In other words, richer countries have more multiple sclerosis. And this has been well known, but I'm going to show you some detailed data from this study in Iran and speculate about the potential reasons for this phenomenon. And I want to give credit to the first author, Vahid Kazimi Mugaram, for this excellent publication. Now they looked at certain data points on human development index and the prosperity index, which are sort of measures of the development of countries. And these look at things such as life expectancy at birth and the amount of average education and GDP per capita and access to health care and government and business development. And these measures tend to be higher in developed countries and lower in developing countries. And they inversely correlate with the prevalence of multiple sclerosis. And there are various reasons why this may be the case. So this is just a big picture of view looking at different countries and the prevalence of multiple sclerosis. And you can see the overall incidence, which are new cases or new diagnoses of MS, are more common in countries like North America, Western Europe, Central Europe, and they're kind of intermediate in areas such as the Middle East and Eastern Europe. And then uh, they're lower in areas in Asia and in Central Africa. And, you know, part of this could be genetic. It's known that Asian people do have a lower risk of multiple sclerosis, uh, even in higher prevalence countries such as Norway and the United States. But Hispanic people and people of African descent seem to have roughly equal risk of multiple sclerosis when they live in developed countries. So I don't think all of this is genetic. I think something else is going on here. Now, they just looked at the sort of correlation between the human development index and multiple sclerosis incidence. So this is sort of a big picture view. And so we're looking at the HDI and we're looking at the association between incidence or new diagnoses of MS prevalence, the overall rate of MS. And then they also looked at mortality related to MS and disability adjusted life years. But let's just take a look at prevalence on the second line. So when you look at countries that have a low human development index, you see a, a rate of 8.25 per 100,000. So MS is rare. Medium HDI countries, it's 9.52, still very low. High human development index countries, it's 17.08, so getting a little higher. But then when you look at very high HDI countries, very developed countries, the rate jumps to 54.27. In other words, about 1 in 2,000 people have multiple sclerosis. And there's quite a bit of variability amongst those countries. For instance, in the United States, the rate of MS may be as high as 1 in 350. And of course, there are other confounding factors as well, but clearly there's a correlation there. This chart sort of looks at a global map and it looks at the human development index and the incidence of multiple sclerosis and the prevalence of multiple sclerosis. And so the red dots in each country represent the prevalence of MS and you can see the black triangle in inside of that red dot is the incidence of MS and of course those two things are highly correlated and the bigger red dots mean more multiple sclerosis and in terms of the colors the green countries are the countries that, that have the highest human development index such as Canada the United States Russia Australia southern South America some parts of the Middle East and you can see there's definitely a correlation between those countries and higher prevalence and incidence of multiple sclerosis. Now there's something else that may be going on here, which is latitude. So it's well known that countries closer to the equator have lower rates of multiple sclerosis. Part of this is because ultraviolet radiation affects the immune system, and I have a separate video on that topic if you want to take a look. But you can see countries near the equator definitely seem to have lower rates of multiple sclerosis, and that may be a confounding factor as well. Now, if we look at the other index, the prosperity index, which is much more detailed, the map is a little bit different, but generally speaking, it's the same. And so countries that have a higher prosperity index definitely have higher rates of multiple sclerosis, although there are some exceptions. For instance, in southern Africa, you know, there's a high prosperity index, but still relatively low prevalence of multiple sclerosis, but a little bit higher than in central Africa, though that could be due to other effects such as latitude. Let's move on. So this is looking at latitude and multiple sclerosis because this is a potential confounder. Now, it's a little bit of a busy slide, but let's just look at prevalence to keep it simple. So if we look at countries in the northern hemisphere below the 20th parallel, there's a pretty low prevalence of 
of MS, 7.85 per 100,000. If we go to the 20 to 40th parallel, it's 23.96. And if we go above the 40th parallel, it jumps to 58.94. And of course, this is highly statistically significant. So this is a potential confounder we have to look out for. And there may be a reason for this. Maybe countries that are closer to the equator, there are limits on agriculture, and that historically may have limited their economically development. And this have more have, may have been confounded accidentally with economic growth and later the risk of multiple sclerosis. Now, if you look at the overall correlation between the HDI and the PI and multiple sclerosis, it's pretty high. So again, looking at incidence, prevalence, mortality, disability of life years, they all average to around 0.65, which is a pretty high correlation and suggests that something is probably going on. Now we can look at individual components of these indices. So what is it about the prosperity index or the human development index? Is there something specific such as economics, education, access to healthcare? And it seems that the answer is no. If you look at all these individual factors, they all correlate with the incidence and prevalence of MS, but nothing really sticks out. They all have a roughly equal correlation between 0.4 something and 0.6 something. And they're all, of course, sort of correlated with each other. So there's no single factor related to economic development that seems to be correlated with multiple sclerosis. Now they did try to look at the potential confounder of latitude. Again, latitude could correlate both with economic development and with risk of multiple sclerosis, and they may sort of in relate to each other indirectly, but it seems that no, there's sort of an independent effect. And this was only true if you looked at the prosperity index. You can see that there was still a correlation that was statistically significant, p-value less than 0.001, whether you look at prevalence, insulin, disability adjusted life years, etc there definitely was a correlation. Now this chart is very strange. For whatever reason, they put the regression coefficient rather than the correlation coefficient. And I suspect that the correlation is reduced. It's not as strong as 0.65 when you take latitude into account, but there is a correlation nonetheless. Now what are the potential causes of this? And by the way, this is just a big picture view. If you sort of take all of the developed countries versus all of the developing countries, there's a huge difference in the incidence of multiple sclerosis. There's an overlap for sure, but if you look at developing countries, they all essentially have a medium or low incidence of multiple sclerosis. And if you look at developed countries, there's quite a range, but a lot of the ones that have lower incidence of multiple sclerosis may be Asian countries such as Singapore, where there may be some genetic factor where people of Singaporean descent may be resistant to multiple sclerosis for factors other than lifestyle and economic development. So what is the explanation for this? Well, I I don't really know the answer, but I can give you various hypotheses. One would just be recognition and diagnosis of MS. In some countries that aren't as developed, they may not have as many MRI machines and neurologists, and there could be some people walking around with multiple sclerosis that are just undiagnosed. But that being said, some of these countries with really low MS prevalence are actually fairly developed. For instance, in Nigeria, they have low rates of multiple sclerosis, but trust me, I've talked to quite a few Nigerians, and they definitely have the ability to diagnose MS. It seems that the prevalence is just genuinely low. And if you talk to people in countries where the prevalence of MS is rising, such as in India, if you talk to older neurologists, they'll tell you, oh no, the prevalence really is rising. It's not just that we're better at diagnosing it. Another possibility is ultraviolet radiation, as I mentioned, and other lifestyle factors. For example, it's known that other diseases, such as heart disease, are correlated with multiple sclerosis, at least from an epidemiologic standpoint. So there may be a, some association between Western diseases, diet, and the risk of multiple sclerosis. If we go back in time, it was recognized by Dr. Roy Swank, for instance, that saturated fat intake in countries correlated with the risk of multiple sclerosis. Sclerosis. So maybe as countries develop, they consume more dairy, more processed food, more saturated fat, and that may increase the risk of multiple sclerosis in susceptible individuals. And of course, there are various other factors. Another potential hypothesis is the hygiene hypothesis, which suggests that as we become more clean, 
we walk around with shoes, we don't get exposed to parasites, contaminated water when we're younger, that sort of changes the development of our immune system, and our immune system isn't really ready for that. And it turns out that early parasite exposure has certain effects on the immune system. For instance, it tends to trigger a T helper cell type 2 response, very similar to the mechanism of action of beta interferons, which are drugs used to treat multiple sclerosis. And of course, there are many other possible factors. And I'd, be a I'd ask you, why do you think there's an association with rich countries having more multiple sclerosis? Do you think one of my hypotheses is correct? Or do you have your own hypothesis? Please post in the comments below and please make suggestions for future videos.